2024 season. We just have a mission and a vision that is to build and sustain a championship culture um, on and off the field every year and don't want to complicate it really with our guys. So we just try to create that clarity in that mission every year and then reset each year that these guys come back to create the same goals and same actions each and every year and try to replicate that with the guys that are in the locker room. I think last year's class really showed us kind of the blueprint of what it should should look like. I hope it looks somewhat like it did last year, but at the same time, there should be little tweaks here or there because ultimately we didn't we didn't get to what we wanted to get to last year, and that's winning the national championship. You no, know, I think building off of some of the success we've had last year, trying not to, to focus as much on last year, and, but being able to build off what we really, you know, kind of set out and did last year. Just be able to take that next step. Um, obviously, the goal is to get the championship weekend, the process-oriented goal where we're just trying to stack little wins together, right? Day by day, trying to get a little bit better. It's, I know with me, with the face-off unit, just trying to build upon the foundation that we've already laid throughout this fall and just get a little bit better each day. What was it feeling like for you being named captain? Being named captain was a great honor. It doesn't necessarily change the way I lead. However, it is nice to be in the rooms with coaches, creating a direction for our team. And hopefully it's not gonna change what's gonna happen on a day-to-day -day action necessarily, but it does help with the bigger vision of kind of leading Penn State to somewhere that I have an impact on. It's an honor being voted a captain from your peers, your teammates, guys that you are along for the ride with through the four or five years, however many years it may be. Knowing that they have the trust and belief in you is a huge, huge piece of it all. It's been one of the greatest honors of my life. I'm just looking to do my best for the team and you know help help support and help my teammates grow and, and growing into something that you know we aspire to be and, and, and trying to not only help us win games, but to help everybody on the team become something greater than they already were and something greater than they thought they could be. Good. All right, 9 a.m. crew, let's bring it up. Great effort, great energy in here. Game week, boys, right? The weather shifted a little bit. All right, we had a couple hot weeks. Now it's getting a little bit colder, all right? We may not be as thirsty throughout the day. Make sure we're hydrating, okay? Make sure we're doing all those little things with that cold weather, okay? Taking care of yourself, supplements, vitamin C, whatever. But make sure we're hydrating now that it's cold, even during practice. All right, great job. Fuel the rest of the day. Have a good practice today. Let's go, boys. One, two, three. It's currently 5.13 on a Monday. I've been with the squad almost a full day and these guys are juiced up for practice. I think this is one of the first teams I've been around that's been so locked in on one goal. Talking to these guys about the experience they had on that last play call at Lincoln Financial, it's definitely sinking in with them. Ledman snakes around the crease, inside roll! Ledman, if it's good, Duke wins! The Blue Devils win it! They don't want to experience that again. And the hunt for the Final Four all started after that play call in Lincoln Financial. Will Penn State bounce back to the Final Four? Will the Nittany Lions get back to Championship Weekend? Let's find out. Shot the score from Penn State. Does it score? And this is a thing of beauty. When it's used in lacrosse in the quarters at this level, it comes down to a clock issue, a timing issue. Did he beat the clock? A crease call is not something that you can review. Ledman's foot is in the crease before he releases the shot. The infamous in the crease call, where do you land with that four months later? For us, it still hurts and it still motivates us every single day that, that we were so close, but but yet at the same time, so far away. It's tough. I mean, it's, it's certainly challenging. I think both teams want to win and lose based on the merit of the game versus an outside circumstance that really shouldn't control the course of that game. So it's our job as a coaching staff to communicate to our young men about the, the reality of life and that it's not always going to go our way. I think that moment for those guys, especially the seniors who don't have a chance to return and to see if they can just get us back into that, that situation. It was, it was something I'll never forget, being able to be a part of that game. And I'm just so proud of how everybody played and handled it and you know just left it all out in the field. It's tough. You know, feel for, for the guys on the, the team and who were a part of that 
especially those on the field. It happened, right? There's a game, that call goes the other way, we still might lose that game. So I'm not focused as much on that, but it's about making sure that, taking care of the guys who are on the field who experienced that, and then, you know, moving forward the best we can. And that's putting last year in the rear view and, and looking ahead to 2024. Get out there, Gruber! Okay, ball! Oh, good trail check, Gruber! Good two, good two. Nice job, Kyle, good two! Make it interesting, let's go! You gotta play the clock! Next stick, Ethan, stick, stick, stick! Nice look. What's it like getting coached by your brother? Uh, I love that question. <laughs> um, it, it's an awesome opportunity. OC, OC, I'm not going to lie, I think I'm taking Ross. I think I'm taking Ross. <laughs> There's only one way to find out after practice today, the two of you racing each other. Continue to think about the detail of coming off that pick, rubbing shoulders. Good job, Sandy. Good job, Sandy. Good job. It's the right idea. Good handle. Good handle, Teach. Good handle. Liam, just keep stepping back there so you get to the goal line, and then we want you to separate. Oftentimes with that goal line, they're going to hard chop it or double you, so you want to step away to create that space and then throw the ball inside. Hey, what's up guys, it's Matt Costa, number 23, senior offensive midfielder. Here we are, I'm gonna take you through our uh, lacrosse facilities and uh, we're gonna start with East Area here. So here we are, starting with Fueling Station. What's up girls? Um, Fueling Station, player lounge, we spent a ton of time in here. Kind of before, after practices, during the day, kind of in between classes, guys come in here, lounge around obviously. Surprised no one's in here to be honest. So guys are grabbing protein shakes, a few sticks, kind of really to fuel your body kind of for the day and for post-practice recovery as well. So here we are, locker room. Walk in, first thing you see is uh, kind of accolades from, from the program, kind of what it, what our program is. So Connor Darcy, we represent him. Then we got the brick here. This is like the symbol of our program. Goes to one guy every week who kind of embodies our three core values. What is Brick Squad? Brick Squad really encompasses what we're trying to do across the board here. We want to be a, a group that's just tough, a group that's resilient. And that's the hope. Our guys resemble that in the weight room. They resemble that on the practice field. Uh, and even to the point where, where we carry a brick to everywhere we go. The more we can resemble that brick itself, the better off you know we typically are. Brick Squad is our identity. So we have the brick, which resembles toughness, resilience, and reliability. The Brick Squad mentality kind of incorporates all of that into how we play. We're all in it together. We're bu building this program brick by brick is like what we call it. That Brick Squad mentality is just kind of in our identity. Here we are as well, Connor Darcy Memorial, uh, teammate for life. The player number 16, which is Grant Haas, his locker's over there. Two-time uh, captain, fifth year as well. He represents him and uh, carries on his legacy about what it means to be a Penn State lacrosse player. So You got announced uh, that you'll be wearing number 16 this year. What does that number mean to you in this program? It's been a symbol of something more, a bigger picture, which helped us kind of then see that bigger picture and that it's not just about the wins, losses, it's about the brotherhood that we create here and the, the life after college. And so being able to wear number 16 and represent Connor Darcy, and not just Connor Darcy, but the guys that wore 16 after him. It truly means the world, and it was one of the biggest honors of my life to represent that Darcy family and continue the legacy. You got chosen to wear number 11. What does 11 mean to this program? It's a number that honors the Jacober family. His family was flying in on a, in a plane to come watch him play and tragically the plane went down and he lost all of his family members in the crash and he didn't find this out until after the game ended. After this happened, the team was practicing down on Panzer before Panzer was built. And they're in the middle of practice and Mike comes running over the hill across university and, and down onto the practice field and everyone stops. They take their helmets off, gloves off and just give him a round of applause because somebody who had lost everything now came back to the team when no one was expecting him to and the season wasn't going well and he stepped into this role as being the ultimate teammate which is what number 11 represents and it is one of the greatest honors of my life to wear the number 11. Both of those numbers are celebrated through alumni weekend. Each of the young men that, that have a chance to represent both those numbers pass it down to the next member who has a chance to wear it. It's become a great tradition, it's become a great honor, and it's a family now in and of itself, so that, that's become really the standard of the leader of what it means to be a part of the Penn State Lacrosse program. We got Forge right here, perfect locker. Penny here, 
shoulder pads, elbow pads, gloves, helmet, and then shoes, cleats down there, and then everything else kind of goes in those bins, but a little dirty there because guys have been in and out of the locker room. But so this is uh, JB Strachan, senior JB defenseman. Strachan. This is Luke Mercer. So uh, here we are coming out of the locker room, as you can see, pictures on the left and right of different All-Americans. And obviously we share this facility with women's lacrosse is right here and then uh, field hockey right here as well. Field hockey had a great season last year, final four appearance. So you guys hang know. out with uh, field hockey and women's across off the field? Yeah, yeah, without a, we probably see them the most. Film room, this is where we get a lot of film review, study, kind of go over different tactics and plays that we're implementing. So this film room fits around, I want to say it's like 65, 70, 70 guys. Obviously we only have uh, 55 guys on our team, so guys come in here, it's either uh, you're getting praised or you're getting ripped on by coach. So <laughs> here we are, kind of walking from the film room to the weight room. Uh, Big Joe, Cal and Gina right here. Biggest, strongest guy on the team. He's got one of those big kettlebells. He's cheating himself, but Joe, being the biggest guy on the team, what does your meal plan look like? A lot of food, honestly. I see a lot of snacks. Pals, breakfast, definitely. Waffles, pancakes. You see the Italian horns on the two Italians. Come on. <laughs> Our Morgan Academic Center is what we like to call it the Mac. A lot of guys get down and dirty books here, so let's take a tour. A lot of good projects over here. We'll walk where uh, some of the guys really like to spend their time. Some of my favorite study spots is in these rooms over here. And if you want, take a uh, Zoom video call, interview, whatever it may be, but a nice little quiet study room over here. If you head over here, obviously you got all the teams and we pride ourselves in academic excellence. And so actually last year we had a team GPA, but I think it was a 3.3, .3, so pretty good in the classroom. Louisville Hall, this is our indoor facility. We share it with uh, football and all the other teams as well. So kind of beginning of the year, winter time when it's super cold, this is where we're in for uh, the majority of the first half of the year. So take you guys through for games and stuff. We usually have the first game of the year in here. I set up stands kind of on this side right here and uh, really get down. And down and dirty here, so this is where we love to love to work out. Is it hard to see the ball? Yeah, definitely. I mean, we have a orange ball, so we kind of get used okay, to it and we adjust know. to it. Yeah, yeah, we adjust to it a little bit, but I'd say for the goal is to <laughs> play a little tough. Yeah, yeah. In here, as long as with like games and practices and stuff, we're also in here at 6 a.m. most Fridays. We got sleds and a big circuit going on. So this is uh, where we put in a lot of sweat equity in this program. A lot of guys are also in here on their on their free time, getting extra shots. I mean, throwing the football, hanging out. So we love it in here. We really take advantage of uh, of this space. Big Ten Championship and two Final Four appearances in the last four years. What's it gonna take for you guys to get over that hump? Oh yeah, it's a, it's a really good question. It's probably the million dollar question too. Building and sustaining a championship culture is, is what we sort of are our mission statement here and that's what it is it's you can't deviate from that or try and go above and beyond it's about working day in and day out being a great team falling back on the core values and we're going to end up right where we need to be i don't know if there's one thing that we should necessarily be focused or looking at in terms of what will get us over the hump in terms of getting to memorial day weekend but but i believe that we have the right thing going and, and hopefully one of these days it will turn and turn in our favor to, to be able to play on memorial day and hopefully win that game just a continued commitment to what we believe in and stand for. We know the process works. It's just how do we refine it a little bit more? How much closer do we need to be? How much more of a bond can we build? Trying to see where we were going to go and how we are going to do it. And I think last year helped a lot in seeing that we are capable of getting there. Um, and so this year, I think having the belief will help in getting us over that hump. I'm gonna show you guys what it's like to live as an upperclassman here on the Penn State lacrosse team. Let's dive in. Oh, what's up? What's up, fellas? Ethan Long, junior midfielder, number 20. I'm Matt Trainer, number 22, junior midfielder as well. Welcome to the crib. This is where we usually chill, eat breakfast, lunch, dinner. Usually just chilling here with the boys. I'm Will Peden, number 12, junior attackman. What's going on, boys? Uh, Michael Ferrone, junior midfielder, wearing 34. What's it like living with these two cats? Hey man. It's nice. Good good roommates. They're some clowns. They're one of my best friends. So, you know, just being able to chill with them is, you know, funny. We got all the jerseys there. We actually just hung yeah. up the other This one. is Will, Ethan, myself, and then Mike. So we're pretty big cooks in here. We got some meat thawing out. He's marinating something. So here we got the fridge, dude. A lot of meat. Yeah. A lot of eggs. Who's the best cook in the house? I'll say. Nice I'll say us too, probably up yeah, there. Nice he's the best. Yeah. He's, he's he, probably the best cook in the house. You two 
run the house? Nah, nah, yeah, nah. nah. Mike, Mike, everybody, everybody, everybody runs it. Everybody runs it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Welcome to the room. I don't know, pretty standard room. This was passed down from Jack Trainer. Yeah, we got the seizure rack over here. Got the family, the girlfriend, uh -oh. the new pop. Uh -oh. What's the matter. girlfriend's name? You want to give her a shout out? Uh, Elle McGee. Yeah, shout out to her. Give me a famous collector. What's the go to? Our. And then you got the goals up here. Gotta walk us through this. <laughs> Big Mike wrote those up there. I don't even keep those up. How we doing? Welcome to the room. Passed down by uh, Matt Costin and Nate Bowler. Best room in the house for sure. Got the Natty semifinal trophy. Kind of feeling like a like a rustic vibe out of you with these frames. Yeah, I, I, I had to match the interior designing of. Look the, at uh, that! Is that your major? Over here. No, his communications are the science. Castle. What is old uh, Theodore mean to you? Not much, but the quote does. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie. A great quote to live by. You gotta be the man in the arena. We have the closet over here. Yeah, we just got hang up like my going out shirts and then. Just the khakis, quarter zips, polos. What's your favorite tee in there? Have a rustic again. Avalon. This is a vet move too, folks, a vet move. Keeping the tie tied, so all you gotta do is pull it up on the neck. See, people know about that type it's of classic. stuff. So how long you been in this house? I've been in this house for one year now. We're gonna all live here next year again. Sweet. All juniors coming back, so. Yeah. Definitely way better than the house I lived in next, last year, I'll tell you that, and yeah. way better than the dorms, so. Now we'll take you to the top floor where the uh, top dogs stay in the house. Going to my oh, 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 oh. <laughs> We got this room right now. Yeah, this is my room. Queen size bed, so you know, good sleeps here. Wow, oh, that's nice. Yeah. That's nice. You two are up here. You're obviously the top dogs. You guys run the crib. Yeah, of course. So how did you guys get first pick? No, no. <laughs> they gave you guys second, last yep. pick. Last pick to the top it, yeah. dogs. What's this jersey? Explain yeah, the so ones. that's my uh, high school jersey. We have a breast cancer game once a year. A little gaming setup over oh. here with a TV. We got the oh. closet out here. What's the go-to shirt on a date night? I'm gonna Ooh. have to put on at the creamery. Ooh. 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 He's got put, the drew. I'm Ooh. putting on at the creamery. Wow. Gotta look good. He's Maybe nice. I'll throw on this, trying to act a little casual. Wow. Oh, oh, who's on the back? Who we got? Big J. Big J. Wow. Jack Turner. Shout out 16. Are we just a tip? Typical lax finance guy, or <laughs> yeah, that's uh, actually given to me by Matt Carson. So you know, if I you that wear out. that, what do you think people think of you? They probably hate me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this is my room. There's really not much going on. We got Kobe Bryant painting right here, along with my dog picture right here. My other dog got a D Jack jersey, Kelly Green. Oh, that's sick. Mom sent this up, so you're a Birds fan. Yeah. Yeah, I'm a Birds fan. And then right in here, we got the closet. What's your go-to shirt? Right here, my brother's friend, he left this at my house, so I've worn that a couple times. And we obviously have the ring in here. Kind of walk us through this for the fans. We got the name on here, the number, and then I know Jack Trainer customized, he put the S. Inside, it just says Team 110, Commitment, Compassion, Compete, just our core values of our team. Fellas. Going to class. That's what the brotherhood's all about, right? A, a tight team. You got underclassmen taking older classmen to class. The legal way, this is legal in the state of Pennsylvania. You can ride in the back. Obviously, no one's gonna get hurt. We're going five miles through campus, so this is obviously a cool aspect of the team. They're so tight, hopping in the back of the car, heading to class. Student before athlete. What's going on? Come on in. Let's do it. Here we got uh, Panzer Stadium where the boys get after it Monday through Saturday. You know, we're putting in the work. And then on the left up here, we got the student section entrance. Definitely the place to be on a Friday or Saturday night watching the boys get after it. All the academic buildings, couldn't really name them to be honest, but we just got them all around here. You got some academic weapons. Just walking the ground, getting after it, crushing the books. What else is there to do here on a Tuesday? Smartest guy on the team. He is the 4.0 genius, Sam Sweeney. Shout out Sam. Here we're in the hub, definitely a main point on campus. We got studying going on, socializing, heading downstairs. We got a little aquarium on the right. Maybe any frog sighting in the aquarium? I see some Nemos and Dorys. I ain't seen no frogs. On a Wednesday, I'm here. We're getting Wing Wednesday with the fellas. Oh, okay. uh, they have it at the buffet. Other than that, I'm not, yeah, I, yeah. <laughs> Alright, I'm gonna show you guys how the underclassmen 
lift at Penn State on the men's lacrosse team. Let's do it. Hey, what's up, guys? Freshman lacrosse team, my name is Kyle Lehman, number four. Patrick Calgary, number 26. And th th this is our room. This is where I stay right here. Right now, I got the scooter. I've been using all the freshmen I've run scooters, which is really nice to get around campus pretty quickly. Right here, I got some pictures of the fam. Just got some friends. Got the girlfriend in here. Just good memories that happened over the summer. Just upgraded this fish tank. Yeah. And then just more pictures. The girlfriend, you want to give her a shout yes, out? Yes, I would love to give her a shout out. Talia, shout out Talia. This is Area. where we sit and get all the work done. This is where we go off and uh, you know get the grades we need to get done. We got the closet back here. Well, I'll say Talia comes in oh. date night. What, what am I picking out? I usually like to go with the casual button down. Wow, okay, the blue. interesting. Yep. What's it like rooming with this guy? Super cool. Right now he's kind of crippled and I'm crippled as well. Yeah, so. it's not. It's we've, a, we've been struggling a little easy. bit. This is obviously sure. your side. Give us yeah. a walk through. So here. I actually got that fish in June. I was up here for summer. Doing good. Still yeah. alive. We got Nemo in the back. Okay. And then really we just got best blanket ever. We got the <laughs> Mickey blanket. That's really it. That's, that's all I got going on here. <laughs> And, and then we're just cruising. I mean, that's really it. How's it been as a young freshman? Super cool. I think we're just taking a lot of the knowledge from the older guys. Phenomenal athletes. And just, it's definitely super cool to uh, just take in like what they have to say and just feed off of their insight. Yeah. What's it been like with Coach T? How's the experience been with him so far? Oh, fantastic, really. He's the best coach I've ever been around. And he's always looking to make sure off the field that you're on top of your, you're on your A game and really just attention to classroom. And he's really trying to prepare you for the next step in your life, which is hard to realize as a freshman, but yeah. I'm starting to get it now. And it's, uh, it's pretty cool. Last question, favorite flavor at the creamery? <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's always a classic question. Um, they have a coffee break over there. I'm a big, big coffee break fan, so I think that's probably, I would probably go with that one. I don't know what it's called, but when they have chocolate and peanut butter and they put it together, that's the best. Number one, grilled stickies unbelievable and then the other one for me is coconut chip i know go-to is always death by chocolate i like uh bittersweet mint it's basically just mint chocolate chip yeah, but yeah. that's what they call it it depends honestly like if it's a hot day mint chocolate chip for sure okay. right now though i'd probably go chocolate peanut butter okay i'd say probably probably classic cookies and cream that's right not, now that's a great classic day. I actually have not been to the creamer yet. I know I'm not an ice cream guy. People look at me crazy because I'm not an ice cream guy. I'm not a coffee guy. I'm gonna have to try that sometime. I don't think I've actually had any of the ice cream there. That's the one thing I'm sort of I haven't missing. I haven't been there. I gotta I gotta head out and do a little bit more deep dive there. Literally, I, I just went to a teammate's wedding this weekend, and you couldn't imagine the amount of people when you're just away from Penn State that will ask you about the creamer. What's up, guys? Uh, we're at the. Where's the hand? <laughs> What's up, boys? What's up, guys? We're at the Penn State Creamery. Uh, get some ice cream. Personally, I've. Uh, I'm probably gonna get cookie dough. OC. I'm a cookie dough guy too, bro. Grilled stickies all the way. It's an absolute lock. Always has been. Always chocolate chip cookie dough. First time here. Don't know what I'm gonna get. I've heard grilled stickies is elite. We'll see us dive in here in a second. Mm. Dude. Yeah. This man. This. That's All right, grilled that. stickies. Mm. This one's f***ing elite. This is elite. What can we expect out of Penn State lacrosse this year? What you can expect out of Penn State lacrosse is just a resilient team. You're going to see that resilience on the field, and you're also going to see a team that believes in ourselves more than we've ever believed in ourselves before. They play hard. When they watch us play, there seems to be purpose. Man, that team loves each other. A really motivated team. A tough group of individuals. And a group of individuals that love just playing for each other. A group that just plays hard. Yeah, I think you can expect a team that's going to go out and play a full 60 minutes of blue-collar, hard-nosed lacrosse. And, you know, that's what this program is about. That's what I know we're trying to instill in all of our guys. That he's just trying to create that cohesion throughout the fall, that blue-collar mentality, being a great teammate, effort, attitude and toughness. A hardworking, resilient group that striving to win a national championship. We're a group that's going to have each other's back through it all and a group that won't let outside noise or other people kind of deter where we go but rather the 56 of us players along with the coaching staff going the journey together through the highs and lows no matter what happens. Put our uh, head down and going to work and doing it the right way.
a bunch of competitors. We're gonna come to compete every day. That's all you can do. You should expect out of Penn State a tough group that's relentless and that has a high IQ off the ground and then in those gray areas. So I'm super excited. We got a lot of fierce competitors and this is gonna be an exciting season. What happened? He's just too strong. He just shot it through the roof. The Fighting Irish play like a champion today. Notre Dame with its first.